I'm here with Ethan Brown from Beyond Meat. Welcome to the conference of Montreal. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, you're certainly the man of the hour, very popular, and of course, Beyond Meat has been uh, attracting a lot of very positive attention. Let's start by talking about the panel that you just participated in. Agriculture was a big theme. We all know that plant-based food is growing dramatically in popularity. What's the impact on agricultural production from your perspective? Sure. So I think a lot about this question. I, I care an enormous amount about the agricultural sector in general. Um, I have a history uh, there as well. Um, and for me, this is really an exciting opportunity for agriculture. It's not a threat. And I think that's something that, that I hope consumers understand and certainly the sector itself understands. If you look at the history of agriculture, there have been step changes in efficiency. And the one that we talked about earlier was around the, the combine and the use of the combine and then fertilizer to dramatically increase the yield of a given acre of land. And so literally unprecedented growth in productivity per field, you know, thousand time increases in corn, soy, and wheat, etc. But what are we doing with all that plant material? We're running it through an animal. Now, has the animal changed that much? Now, I would argue that no. Over the last 15,000 years, while we've made the animal bigger, we've made the animal maybe slightly more efficient, it's still the same biological system that we're using to convert plant material into meat. So what we're doing is saying, let's not do that anymore. Let's use a system of heating, cooling, and pressure to take the core parts of meat directly from the plant and organize them in the architecture of meat. Now, the theme of the conference is embracing change. And of course, we're seeing huge amounts of change in terms of how Canadians eat. Uh, we've talked a lot about vegetarianism, veganism, but we also talk about flexitarianism. Yeah. And Beyond Meat has been a huge driver in that trend. How do you see flexitarian uh, eating trends evolving in the next year? And what's Beyond Meat's role in helping drive that growth? Sure. So our number one responsibility is to make products that are as good as we possibly can and to continue to close the gaps between our product and animal protein. So, you know, we know that we're not all the way there. We know that, you know, we have many miles to travel before we provide a piece of meat that's been made from plants that is completely indistinguishable from its animal protein equivalent. That said, the closer we get, the more and more we welcome consumers into the brand. And I'll give you a statistic. In the nation's largest conventional grocer in the United States, we have data now that shows that 93% of the consumers that are putting the Beyond Burger into their cart are also putting animal protein of some form in it. So to me, that's very promising in the sense that the consumer, and you mentioned flexitarian, continues to lean into this right, and feel comfortable. And so here's the thing we need to focus on, these three pillars. If we can get taste, and nutri taste right and the satiating experience of meat, we can get nutrition right, which, you know, we can even exceed the nutritional qualities of meat. And finally, we get price right. We were able to drop the price of our products below that of animal protein. That's a five-year initiative for at least one product. We believe then it becomes a question of why wouldn't you do this? Right. Now, Health Canada shares your perspective because the new Canadian Food Guide, which came out earlier this year, for the first time recognized, recognized plant-based sources of protein. Yeah. And of course, that's our nutritional guideline. How important is government regulation in terms of moving flexitarianism forward? So I think less about the government and more about our relationship with the consumer. I mean, it's been an amazing relationship we've had. You know, certainly the government can do things to maybe level the playing field. I think that's probably the most important role government has. But I don't think they should be distorting the market. I think let us compete directly uh, and let us engage the consumer directly. And the consumer will tell us whether they want this to be a complete replacement or they want it to be partial. And uh, I think, you know, we're going to keep reading the consumer and seeing where they're going. Maybe to end on a lighter note, barbecue season is coming up. Dare I ask your personal favorite Beyond Meat product? Oh, sure. <clears throat> sure. So I have a bunch, obviously. Uh, I love the breakfast sausage, which is on sale here at A&W and, okay. and, uh, and, and just tested it at Tim Hortons. And, and I want to comment, too, just on those two institutions. I mean, A&W was really special to us going forward. Tim Hortons, really special to us. They leaned in before others. Um, you know, the, and I know very well the leadership at, at A&W, Susan Senegal and, and others there, and, and just a great team. And, and I could say the same with Tim Hortons. And, you know, uh, I love that breakfast sausage. In terms of a burger, yes. oh, my Barbecue goodness. Season. Yeah, so many that I love. I like to do uh, a pretzel bun, first of all. Oh. Pretzel bun's fantastic. I Put a little this. pineapple on top of the burger, okay. and it's done. It's just terrific. So the summer of 2019, pretzel bun with pineapple. Correct. Ethan Real Brown said it here first. Yeah, okay, exactly. thank you. Thank okay. you so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of your thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate it.